I'm a true believer of that the technology can radically change the lives of people and especially in a rural mm. landscape get a replacement for a cart right you know right now even now as we speak mm-hmm. it takes roughly about a week right so now with this you can just walk into a branch mm. you know authenticate yourself you can instantly get the ATM card or your credit card Hello hi welcome to Duara Tech Talks our first video podcast episode discussing about everything tech and everything in between tech and how it reaches the ground audience today we have with us a very interesting guest uh, Mr Balaji Lakshman co-founder and CTO of Duara e dairy solutions hello balaji how are you doing hey great uh, pleasure to be part of the duara tech talks and uh, kick starting the scene absolutely pleasure is all ours uh, so balaji before we go deep dive can you give us a small introduction about duara e dairy and what it does so uh, duara e dairy we are a fintech for dairy space uh, our goal uh, is to provide uh, uh, technology and solutions to bring uh, dairy farmers into financial inclusion mm-hmm. especially around the lending and mm-hmm. insurance okay besides this we essentially also have uh, tools and services which enable them to improve their livelihoods in the entire dairy ecosystem okay so can i uh, will i be right in saying that dwara e dairy essentially acts as a bridge between dairy farmers uh, financial inclusion and actually bridging that gap effectively would that be a good way of saying it absolutely so um, our larger goal in a way is uh, to be that operating system for the dairy farmers mm-hmm. and then connect them with uh, everybody in the ecosystem mm-hmm. so that uh, that livelihood essentially increases this may include a lending insurance it could be many other things as we sort mm-hmm. of go forward so basically e dairy reaches the gap not only in terms of financial inclusion but also creates a, a kind of structure for dairy farmers to scale up as well absolutely so our larger goal essentially is in terms of how do we make that one cattle two cattle owner mm-hmm. uh, into that uh, 18 to 20 cattle owner mm. right and provide them with all the required support and services uh, you know so that they can achieve this uh, not not just uh, achieve this but achieve this faster faster all right so uh, when we're talking about dairy dairy solutions and uh, you being the co-founder and ceo it it is quite inevitable for me to not go into your personal journey so how did you get into tech where where did it all start from for you so i was uh, uh, you know uh, as morning uti uh, i used to always joke that you know probably that's why i'm so cool <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. i did my schooling uh, in ambattur chennai mm-hmm. um, so let's say in fourth standard i had access to computers and i you know still remember you know the first moment that i saw a computer where i was standing where the computer was okay. so and in fourth standard i decided to be love at uh, first sight yeah, okay in some sense uh, it was that way mm. uh, and i decided this is what my life will uh, sort of revolve, revolve around, around. Mm. um so my uh, interest in technology mm. uh, was pretty early mm. right mm. Uh, um, you know i, I still remember uh learning from kurning amrichi which is the mm. sort of uh, uh handbook for c programming mm-hmm. right so uh, you had a very early start into absolutely, uh, this absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah fantastic field yes yeah. so if i'm right uh, your professional journey also included uh, you having a company which was uh, ai based etc yeah so uh, if i may probably uh, you know include my college journey so mm-hmm. i did my undergrad in vela marketing college mm-hmm. um so uh, there as well you know it was uh, you know uh, i've been pretty lucky in terms of uh, having access to multiple sort of mm. so i built my first robot when i was in my undergrad in probably oh. 2003 and uh, where the college sponsored uh, 40000 which is a pretty big deal then so it's a big deal then, then yes right so mm-hmm. where you know i had to write a proposal and you know that you know we are going to a uh, build this humanoid yeah. and you know which can sort of you know imitate the actions of humans and mm. uh, sort of all that and post that i briefly worked in the pro mm-hmm. uh, working in the embedded systems mm-hmm. uh, so you know probably if you're using uh, uh, you know intel motherboards uh, with the 5.1 channel mm-hmm. likely part of the code uh, uh, was written by me for the dolby and dds so wow that's so, indeed a feat uh, that you achieved yeah, so 
uh, mm. yeah, so it's been sort of an interesting journey. And uh, post that, uh, um, I did my uh, research at IIT Madras mm -hmm. in computer science mm -hmm. and in that uh, machine learning and reinforcement mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of my major. I published uh, uh, two research papers in mm -hmm. A-plus conferences. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, even in IIT, I had a, a fantastic support where mm -hmm. uh, we were able to uh, build that robotics and AI lab. Mm -hmm. uh, so we built a couple of robots there. Okay. Uh, Thank to uh, you know, thanks to my professors, uh, mm. Dr. Ravindran and Dr. Kampoti. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were able to sort of set up that uh, uh, lab with you know building robots and you know putting some intelligence, you know <laughs> adding a lot of sensors. So also, my in in that sense, my entrepreneurial journey also started mm. from there. Okay. Where uh, my cust first customer was Cognizant. Oh, okay. So um, uh, so I was very clear then that hey, you know, um, that I should just give a you know do a startup. Mm. So this is way back in 2009 or so, um, where probably, uh, you know, the hype of startup or mm. you know, startup world by itself or even entrepreneurship to that extent was uh, pretty early. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty fascinating to sort of build that uh, initial project, having a Cognizant as the customer. Mm. So one of the early products that we had was a telepresence robot. What would that be, a telepresence so a robot? A telepresence robot is... Uh, Imagine video conferencing on wheels, mm -hmm. where right now all of us are uh, essentially doing Zooms and mm. Teams meeting, right? Mm. Where we sit in a place. Correct. But now imagine there is a robot in an offshore development environment mm -hmm. where probably the customers or the uh, on-site managers, mm -hmm. they can log into the robot. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will be visible on the screen mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there are speakers and all that. And they can move around the offshore environment, oh. go to different places. Okay. Right? And, uh, you know, talk to uh, the, you know, the people. So virtually being present, present. Oh, that's, in, that's a very interesting thing. It would have been a fantastic hit uh, uh. through COVID, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, so, that's true. Uh, so this is very early in 2009 mm. or so. And mm. uh, um, so uh, what I sort of uh, hear from the team later on was uh, mm. they didn't believe one bit that I'll be able to sort of deliver it. So oh. when they started it, and uh, but they wanted to just give a shot, uh -huh. um, and it was pretty fascinating. Sort of build it, make it mm. work, mm. and uh, Frank Dozier, who was the CEO, he had come uh, and he had a look mm. at the robot, and mm. we explored uh, multiple sort of things, what mm -hmm. we could do uh, around it. So this was one of the early projects that uh, I had worked on. Uh, um, so if I may sort of uh, continue in terms of what are the interesting things that we have built. So one of the uh, best of our products was a robot for banking. So okay. that sort of got into the entire financial mm -hmm. and banking space. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to build a sort of a all-in-one uh, robot, mm -hmm. which is like, uh, uh, which can do all the uh, activities that happens in a bank. So mm -hmm. a branch in a bot. So branch that was sort of a uh, okay. concept. Mm -hmm. So can you, can we sort of automate about 80% of the operations Um that engages customer in a uh, in a bot. So this was sort of the basic concept. So basically, it had uh, all the banking devices mm -hmm. as well as part of uh, the robot. And uh, this was in 2012 or so, where mm -hmm. we had integrated the fingerprint. And uh, you know, um, this is early uh, sort of an other uh, time mm -hmm. as well. And uh, where we can sort of so a customer can walk in, uh, they can use the touch screen. So there's cameras, fingerprint. So typically, they can create a bank account, use other verification, mm -hmm. and a bank account is created, and there is a card issuer, oh. and a card instantly is printed you, along with their photo, right? That's so, very, so you weren't joking when you said uh, banking uh, in a bot, yeah. so everything yeah. is being handled by the bot uh, here. Yes, That's so interesting. Or, uh, let's say somebody wants to uh, get a replacement for a card, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, right now, even now, as we speak, mm -hmm. it takes roughly about a week, mm -hmm. right? So now with this, you can just walk into a branch, mm -hmm. you know, authenticate yourself, mm -hmm. you can instantly get the ATM card or your credit card, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or... Um, Let's say people can buy insurance or, mm. um, you know, authenticate themselves and, you know, probably get, uh, you know, a couple of other banking services. So this was sort of the concept. And especially in the Middle East, it didn't stop with a standing bot. Mm. Uh, imagine a customer launch mm. where rather than the customers going to the uh, chaos or mm. the robot, mm. the robot comes to them. Uh -huh. So, you know, where imagine the robot comes from one customer to mm. another and they can essentially... 
uh, you know, get the job done. So that would be very interesting <laughs> customer engagement too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So when we had built this and sort of gave a demo, huh. um, a whole bunch of banks they were extremely sort of impressed. But of course, everybody had this always feeling our be way ahead of our time, mm, mm. right? So. Uh, and of course, we also had the digital banking, which is sort of uh, coming up, so to mm. say. Um, so this is how I sort of uh, got into that uh, financial space and banking space, uh, so to say. And I had a fairly deep dive mm. into the tech for the banking and financial inclusion, okay. where I still remember working uh, on doorstep banking, mm-hmm. building that solution mm-hmm. for doorstep banking, where uh, both for the uh, retail customers as well as the field level staff where they can take this banking into the doorstep for the rural customers right uh, so that was another pretty fascinating experience and gave me gave me a lot of understanding of the banking domain mm-hmm. and the financial inclusion so to say um, so uh, essentially post that uh, you know i was always sort of thinking i have been working more from a mid and top end of the spectrum mm-hmm. right and uh, I'm a true believer that the technology can radically change the lives of people and especially in a rural yeah. landscape. Um, and I also wanted to understand uh, a lot more from a rural perspective. Uh, and I was sort of looking for some sort of an opportunity in terms of uh, where I can build uh, tech and help in some level of a transformation mm. and uh, financial inclusion in the rural space and uh, luckily had an opportunity with mm. Dwara Idari. So, what was your initial, uh, let's say, initial three sixty five in e dairy felt like? How did it start? Was can you give us like a little bit more insight into your journey and how you got I, fully absorbed into it? I absolutely still remember my first day. Uh, so, uh, having a chat with uh, uh, Samir and uh, Ravi in terms of uh, uh, you know that these are some of the opportunities and mm-hmm. these are the sort of problems that we could sort of work on and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Day two, guess what? Uh, I was there in uh, uh, a rural village, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, standing next to a cattle. Uh, essentially, uh, getting into a sort of a hands-on in mm. trying to understand the uh, rural uh, landscape, trying to understand the cattle, trying to understand the dairy farmer. And uh, we also have a, a joke uh, running around where uh, until you step on the uh, uh, dung of the cattle. Your field visit does not complete. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in that sense, uh, day two, you know, we were on the field, mm. uh, you know, uh, essentially uh, trying to understand some of the uh, challenges mm. uh, uh, for the dairy farmers. And 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 obviously, as as you know, all of us know, mm. the financial inclusion is one of the key aspects. Mm. You know, where be it urban or rural mm. access to capital mm. uh, in terms of so that it can help them in achieving the aspirations of people mm. uh, is sort of key right absolutely so uh, we were essentially looking at what are some of the challenges in the uh, uh, lending landscape for example one of the classic things was in terms of uh, the same set of cattle being reused by multiple borrowers as their own cattle as their own okay. right uh, so this is one of the key uh, challenges. Okay. The second is in terms of the um, how do you know that somebody is a dairy farmer with a proof and what sort of uh, things that you have. Let's like say you have the milk stake. But the challenge essentially is in terms of uh, the availability of the milk statements was a you know huge uh, challenge, mm-hmm. right? And uh, how do you understand and uh, underwrite the dairy farmer, mm-hmm. right? Um, So, uh, we wanted to be that sort of a platform where Mm -hmm. on one side we had the uh, dairy farmers, on the other side we had the dairy ecosystem, especially Mm -hmm. the lending institutions, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. banks or small finance banks or NBFCs, right? Uh, So, we were looking at uh, some of these uh, problems. Um, and uh, What were three problems that uh, really struck out you in terms of uh, accessibility and inclusion? So I, I, you know, I used to spill joke around saying that uh, all that I knew was cow gives milk. <laughs> so, and uh, even that was wrong. Mm. So all the cows don't give milk. It's mm. like lactating pregnant cow gives milk. Yes. Right? Mm. 
In this episode, we met Balaji and had the opportunity to interact with him a little bit more detailed into his life, his passion, and how he came to be with eDairy. In our upcoming episode, we are going to deep dive a little bit more into eDairy's uh, tech solutions and how it has impacted the last mile customers and helped them scale faster and better. So stay tuned with us for Dwara Tech Talks.